yes, please. Yes, go ahead. So, um, welcome, welcome back. Um, so today will be more of an overview talk. I will give uh, some uh, proofs, but uh, bits of my talk will be very sketchy. I want to lay down, um, lay out in, um, a strategy of how to prove, how to approach uh, logistics um, conjecture. Um, the main idea is invented uh, by Andersen, Janssen, and Zergel, following um, maybe a more fundamental idea of Zergel in the characteristic zero case. But in the modular case, these are um, the, this is the main um, reference. So uh, this is a book uh, that appeared in the Asterisk series. Um, in there, the proofs are all written down. It's called Representations of Quantum Groups. Um, at the p through that of unity and of semi simple groups in characteristic p, asterisk, asterisk at 220. Uh, it's a book and it's difficult to read, and it's more than 200 pages. And Zerbel wrote an overview uh, on the results and uh, methods uh, in this book, and his paper is called Roots of Unity and Positive Characteristics. It appeared in the conference proceedings and also available at his homepage. So there is a preprint uh, version of this article uh, with uh, some typos, um, and you can uh, download it there. So, um, and the um, the main idea is um, it's as follows. So let me let me repeat. So um, our problem we have reduced our problem uh, to the following. So calculate the character of L lambda for lambda restricted. So this means that lambda alpha check um, is more than p for each simple uh, for each simple root. Um, because of Steinberg's tensor product theorem, that would be enough. Uh, and it is a great coincidence, of course not very coincidental, but, uh, coincidental, but anyways, in this case, uh, so, um, we, we proved that um, for lambda restricted, that L lambda is uh, irreducible as a G module, which is a mere algebra. So this is good news. Um, this is not always the case, but for restricted lambdas, um, this, uh, this is the case. Um, so this is wonderful, um, but we lose the um, the information on, on the character. So we call this um, the, the irreducible quotient of the basic thermal module um, Z lambda, we call it L hat lambda, but in this case it's just a restricted, the differentiated representation of lambda. Um, but we lose the character because the torus um, adds to the Lie algebra, and um, so each weight which is divisible by P um, gets zero. This is the zero way. So for this, um, we um, so um, the character gets lost. So could you repeat the thing? You said the coincidence, maybe not coincidence. I don't know. What could you uh, say that once again, please? Right. So um, so what we proved is that if lambda is restricted, this is irreducible. Uh, module, yes. and then uh, we use this fact to um, to prove um, the Steinberg tensor yes. product um, theorem, and uh, so in the end, uh, what we get is these two um, two statements. It's enough to know these characters, but for these lambdas, um, it is uh, irreducible. So it's it's kind of two uh, very independent facts, which have, are both true, are kind of on the same basis. But it's just good luck that you know this is the case, so that we can really translate the problem into the other language, which is not obvious from the from the beginning. So when the character gets lost, um, because v t x trivial on on k theta p lambda, yeah. Sorry, they're having some uh, difficulty with the recording. Yes. So maybe. They're requesting you to keep it perhaps 
Yay. Okay, so um, the um, loudspeakers are there and okay. Good. Yeah, no, but I think more importantly, I think we, it's for the video recording of the song. Ah, yeah, okay. So you, we, might, we might share it okay right, here, right, right, but right, for uh, people to watch after. For the, you know, for the sound to be caught on the video. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, right, right. right. No, just, if I get too close, then we have this, um, this effect. Oh, oh, this effect. Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, so the character gets lost because the new algebra acts trivially on these uh, on these weight spaces, uh, p lambda. So, um, so um, solution is the solution is remember the t action uh, while differentiating remember the t action. So um, so this yields at the end. G T by modules, kind of Harish Chandra mm. uh, type um, situation. Um, so, and this leads to the following um, category. So, this um, the um, so Zerdo calls this uh, category C and Anderson and Zerdo um, as well. Um, C is the uh, following um, category. So, these um, these are um, so so G modules. With um, an x gradient, so that is a G module M, which is just as a vector space graded um, by um, by the set x and u. So that's an additional um, datum. I mean, giving such a gradient is nothing else than giving a p action. Um, and it should be in such a way that um, h on m, so for each h in the Lie algebra of the torus, h of m should um, should act by mu bar of um, h m for all um, so for all h in the Lie algebra and for all m in m u, and here mu bar mu bar is uh, just a differential of mu, and this is a um, is a is a weight of um, of the Lie algebra. So it's the differential of the of the weight of the torus. So mu was a was a, uh, a full homomorphism from T to K um, K cross. You got an element in K. If you differentiate it, you get um, a linear form on on the Lie algebra H. So H this German H. Is the Lie algebra of T. Okay. So this is a bigger um, category. So let me let me delete these references here. Um, so remembering the T action now gives um, gives a functor. Um, so we obtain a functor. From the theory of G modules to um, to C, just differentiate, but remember the T action, or remember the weight decomposition uh, that preserves characters. Okay. So the first we do is um, we uh, lift the baby Burma modules um, to this category C. So um, remember. Um, we defined the baby Burma module with highest weight lambda to be um, the module that we, so the, oh, um, right, one, yes, yeah, sorry, I, um, there's one thing um, I should here, um, I should add here restricted, restricted G modules, you know, where the action Factors over the restricted uh, quotient. And also, the grading is uh, is not by characters of t. Is the grading not by? Yes, it is by characters of t. Uh, yes. With an x grading, so x is a set of characters, characters of t. Of t. Okay. Yeah. Because that you don't only h of uh, h in t. That's why. Right. H. Um, uh, um, right. So. Um, so the, uh, the t, so this is this should be G T 
tea bag modules, but giving an action of T is the same as um, choosing such a grading. So this is an additional data. It's the same as a T action. So it's kind of a funny way to write it down, but... Uh, so the X is the uh, character of T, correct group of T. Yes. This X is, is, is the homomorphisms of from T to K, K cross. This is the character lattice, the weight lattice of T, the character lattice of T. Um, but, but then um, we, right, I mean it's again. Yeah. So you, you could also call this um, GT, GT modules where the D-algebra of T acts as a differentiation of the T-action. But they should be restricted. They should be. Okay, so um, this was the baby Burma module, so we have this restricted quotient, it's finite dimensional um, algebra, we have D restricted, or UB, and um, you, you induce um, to get this uh, baby Burma module, but now you can, um, this, you can fuse this as a graded, as a graded um, module, so this will be in, in C. So um, it's clear what the action of the Lyrid bar here is, um, but the, um, the grading, the X grading comes from um, an X grading on US on this uh, on this algebra and on K lambda. So um, if we consider it as K lambda as a UB module, um, this depends only on um, the lambda bar. So um, so if you if you look at this quotient x modulo p x, you have to map um, lambda and lambda bar. So um, these are the uh, the integral, so I mean the integral uh, weights of the Lyapunov yeah, of the torus. These are the weights of the torus, and you lose these uh, uh, the, P, uh, the weights that are divisible by by p. And uh, now what you do is uh, this is in so this is in degree lambda, and and U rest has a basis. Um, um, I mean, so. This is the linear span um, um, no, let's, 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 let's put it like, like this, the quotient U rest over U um, B rest. This is the linear span of, um, of, the, um, of the elements X alpha uh, to the M where, um, so, x alpha is in g alpha, alpha is a negative root, and n is between 0 and, and p, right? Because as soon as it's uh, p, it gets uh, reduced in this restricted uh, quotient. So, um, us is u divided by e to the p minus e to the e to this bracket. So this is always an element in the D algebra itself, and this is the p power in the universal enveloping algebra. So you can show that um, these elements um, form a basis in um, in this quotient, and then um, um, so so this means that um, x alpha n alpha and n as before times a tensor one is a basis of C um, lambda, and this should have then degree lambda minus n alpha. Okay, um, let me recapitulate. Um, we have this um, baby Burma module, it's a G module, but we um, endow it with an additional grading by setting the, the element 1, tensor 1 in degree lambda. And then um, we let the, these um, basis vectors. Uh, um, so they are, you mean uh, 
the John and Hurler Malipetikis. John and Hurler Malipetikis. Of these, um, these are denoted as follows. Zc, L lambda, Lc, mu for each lambda and mu in x. So this is equivalent to to the determination of this um, of this character. So now we have translated our original problem into a multiplicity problem. We could have done the same for the Y modules. We're already on a group level. I mean, if you know your uh, multiplicities, the Hurler multiplicities in a Y module, then you're done too. But here we have, um, I mean, this is easier, much easier to approach. So, uh, next step. I should say um, already that um, these numbers um, these numbers we can um, okay it will it will turn out at the end that these numbers um, also occur in a topological geometric con uh, concept, namely, they will be given by certain multiplicities of stalks of parity sheaves on affine flag manifolds. Um, what I said is not completely true, but um, but morally it's true. I mean, these numbers will occur uh, as multiplicities of of sheaves on an affine flag manifold. Okay. So, um, but in order to translate it, it's long. It's long, long. Uh, so, when you say problem is translated, yes. So, it, the, so there is. This is you can only this is, that part is easy, I suppose. Yeah. So uh, that these these um, these problems are um, uh, equivalent. And uh, and it's equivalent. If you solve this, you solve the. Yes. The the, 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 the conjecture. Yes. Because. Um, this is the same as um, character L lambda, the lambda for restricted lambda. So as a remark, this is the same. We can, because we added this C, we can talk about the character here. That's, uh, that, that was the idea. So now, um, um, so you might, you might know um, power reciprocity. Power reciprocity in 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 in, um, in Cantonese is very often um, a kind of very very fascinating connection duality between projective objects and simple objects. And uh, so these are very extreme classes of objects in a in a category. So you have these simple and I mean irreducible objects, and on the other side you have projectors. Um, and in between, you have some kind, you have a class of objects which is called standard objects. Um, in our situation, um, these um, baby Burma models will be the standard objects. The symbols are there, the simple hats, and uh, now we look at projectives. One more question. Yeah. Does this do the Is it uh, simply not not to deserve a name, or is it attributed to somebody? Oh, um, yeah, it's, it's, it is simple because um, you see, the characters of the set C lambda That's will true. form a basis mm -hmm. in the space of all characters, and the characters of this L C lambda too, and the base change matrix is um, the entries of the base change matrix are those. So since we know these characters. If we know the base change matrix, we know these characters, and the other way around. So, um, projectives in C. Um, so, um, there's a fact. Um, 
for each LCU. Now we know we have a projective cover. Um, Q, QC lambda matching to LC lambda in, in the cat we see. So if you want to talk about projective objects, you have to talk, you have to choose a category, right? It's always a notion that is relative to a category. I mean, no, no module is projective by itself. It's only with respect to a category. So just, I just, just, uh, just a remark. Um, and now a simple module can or may not, but it might have a, a projective cover, which is a projective object. Uh, together with a map to LC lambda, a um, subjective map, uh, such that the um, the kernel um, is the maximal uh, is the maximal sub sub object, or uh, you can in more categorical um, notion. Um, so what it means is the following: Q C lambda is projective. The map is subjective. Let's call it pi. And whenever you have um, another um, map from some object, let's call it m, um, to qc lambda to, to lc lambda. So if, if this com so choose any map for so for all f, the composition is subjective if and only if f is subjective. So this um, this um, exists uh, whenever you are in a category of modules over finite dimensional algebra. Um, in our case, we have an additional x grading, but I mean you prove that uh, you check the proof and then you extend the proof a little, and you show that these these objects exist. So our next goal is. Um, while on that, because you mentioned finite dimensional algebra, is there a finite dimensional algebra that this whose representation of this category is equivalent to or something like that? Um, I, I don't think so. Let me, uh, ah, yeah, no, uh, right, no, it can be finite dimensional. Ah, oh, because, um, okay. Because you have um, infinitely many non isomorphic and decomposable projectives. So, I mean, there's, there's a, you can, you can write it as a certain algebra of finite dimension modules of an infinite algebra, okay. something like that. You, you can do. Also, there are infinitely many symbols, right? Yes, infinitely many symbols. And infinitely many non-isomorphic and composable projectors. Yeah. Yes, therefore. Yeah, yeah, therefore, yeah. And so, but, uh, what about the injectors? Oh, yeah, these uh, turn out to be also injectors in, in, this, in this case. Yes, in this case. So um, it's a kind of self-duality in this. Um, this is true in the modular case, but not in category O. Oh, by the way, you can translate, and we'll do it in a, in a moment. You can, I mean, the same statements are true if you look at a semi-simple complex V algebra. You have Verma modules, you have simple modules, you have projective covers and everything. Also for an f and Katsumudi algebra with the technical details. But this is a general approach. Um, okay, so we we look at these projectors. Why do we do that? And the goal is um, to prove Humphrey's reciprocity. Um, well, okay. So it, it says the following. So um, each Q C lambda. Um, Admits a baby Burma flag. Let's just call it a set C flag, a baby Burma flag. Um, so that is a filtration. With the sub portions isomorphic to baby Burma models. Z C 
see news. So you can, so it's an, it's an iterated extension of the um, baby Verma modules. And, um, and so that is kind of, it's not really uh, yet Humphrey's reciprocity, but the Humphrey's reciprocity is the following statement. And for the multiplicity we have, the multiplicity is independent of the filtration. So the multiplicity we denote um, as follows, Q C lambda Z C Q, and this is the same as the jordan hurler multiplicity of, sets of L C lambda in Z C mu. So let me let me prove this um, this reciprocity. And you see, this is very valuable because we want the Jordan Hurley multiplicities, but now we stated it in, in a context of project, and I will explain next why why this is an advantage. So this is DDD reciprocity is capital. Right. So, but um, yeah, yeah. That's uh, but uh, you know, how many was hurt? So this was um, then. So, so that is Humphreys. Yeah, actually, DGG reciprocity is actually Humphreys reciprocity. So that that was the modular case was first. Was, uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, but it's the same statement as the BGG reciprocity. So um, proof of reciprocity. So uh, that these have um, 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 uh, flagged by uh, with with uh, with baby Bomber modules. A, a ZC flag is a kind of um, oh, it's, it's not a difficult statement. You kind of construct um, projectives that have this flag and show that the direct summon has a flag. And so it's not so important. Let me just um, focus on this reciprocity because this is a very general statement. So. Um, so there's a duality on C um, that has um, the, the property that it preserves symbols. Um, so what you do is um, you look at the, the dual represent the contra contract gradient uh, dual representation, um, the dual space, the um, um, the action of the Lie algebra on the linear forms of your module. And this is also um, graded in a natural sense. And then, in order to, I mean, in order to to get this statement, you have to use a Chevalier involution of the Lie algebra more or less like in the finite dimensional case, so that these uh, symbols are preserved. So this is a, a, a contragradient rule composed with a Chevalier involution. And um, so um, then there's, there's the next. Uh, um, claim. So um, the homomorphisms in the category C of a set C lambda into the dual of set C nu. This is um, so the dimension. Let's say the dimension. Um, this is um, one if lambda equals um, nu and zero else. Uh, okay, and so this claim has two parts. We also need x1. x1 is always zero. Let me prove this. Um, so, um, the construction of these baby Verma modules gives, um, gives their um, universal property, so they are universal highest rate modules, like in the in simple case. So um, the space of homomorphisms in C of Z lambda um, to any module M is, um, is the following. 
so you can identify once you have, um, so yeah, this is, you get an isomorphism to the um, um, U and plus invariance of M of a weight um, lambda. So in um, F maps to F of a generator of uh, ZC lambda. So, um, mm, this follows from the construction because, I mean, when, whenever you have an element uh, here, it generates um, 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 a UB module, a module uh, isomorphic to K lambda, and then it's a tensoring um, it's a ten induction argument um, that you use. Um, so, um, okay. So we apply it to, to prove, um, prove this. So this is the same as the uh, UN plus invariance in, in this module of weight lambda. So, um, uh, so if mu is not bigger or equal to lambda, greater or equal to lambda, then um, hom set C lambda set mu as set C mu is, um, is the zero space because there's not even a lambda weight. Because mu is the highest weight here. Yeah, mu is the highest weight here, so um, this is zero. And um, if, um, if lambda is not um, bigger or equal to mu, then, um, <laughs> okay, then we argue as follows. Then uh, the homomorphism from set C lambda to set C mu u is by, I mean, apply the duality, it's a contravariant counter, the same as the homomorphisms of set c mu to set c lambda u, right, du a duality exchanges these two, and uh, this is zero. And um, so it's non-zero only if, um, um, so, um, um, if, now I'm a little, <laughs> a little, a little confused. So it's only, um, yeah, it's only non-zero if mu is bigger or equal to lambda and lambda is bigger or equal to mu, so lambda is, lambda is mu. So lambda is uh, mu, then, um, then Zc, uh, lambda u of n plus um, weight space lambda is one dimensional. That follows from the character that we had before. Uh, okay, and the x, um, this is similarly for x. So in the case of x1, you have the, exactly the same, the same statement um, as, as here. But even in, if lambda and uh, mu are, uh, coincide, uh, each extension splits. So even, even in this case, uh, each extension splits. Uh, so this is 0. This is always 0. OK. Um, right. Let me. Uh, Finish the proof of this reciprocity. And then I will quickly say why, why um, now it's an advantage to talk about projective stem of symbols. Um, okay. So um, now.
through the jewel of um, of the course uh, of this um, baby drama module. So um, we could by induction on the length of the flag. So if this um, if this length is uh, one, um, well, it's it's just it's just written here. The length is one and is a baby drama module, and then um, then this is a uh, is this um, length equals one, so this is easy. And um, if the length is bigger than one, um, so you you can find. Um, let me see. I hope it's the right direction. You can find the submodule. I mean, you can look at the filtration and split off the. Uh, find a short exact sequence of, um, of this form, uh, where also this has a set C flag. I mean, it's just you split off the last um, the, the quotient in the cell filtration. And, and then you get a long exact sequence. So from the vanishing of x1 and this, um, you get the following um, sequence. Then you can um, So I hung with, with the, the, the dual of, of um, the um, baby bomber module with high wave lambda. So um, this um, goes to um, M, sets in lambda here. This goes to um, C, M prime, sets in lambda dual. And then this goes on to x1 of set c mu, set c lambda bar, plus s star, and this is zero. So you get this short exact sequence. And now um, the multiplicity of set c lambda in here is the multi corresponding multiplicity here, plus either zero or one. And this is um, one, if this is of dimension one, and you see that um, that's a standard argument and gives the reciprocity. Okay. Okay, so um, let me, um, before we, uh, we pause for, for tea, let me just finish. No, 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 no. I'm just going to see if it is all right. Okay. It is all right, so it's okay. okay. It's up to you now. Okay, let me finish with uh, one remark. So our problem now is to um, calculate yet another multiplicity, and uh, of Q C lambda to Z Z mu star star. Um, this we have shown, and since Q C lambda is a projective cover, It's um, not difficult to show that this is the corresponding um, the, um, is this um, John and Hilda uh, multiplicity. I mean, whenever you have a, a simple sub portion, you have a homomorphism of this projective cover into this in, into the module. I mean, this is a quotient of a sub module, so a projective maps into it, and this is the same as the dimension of the the home space. This is kind of easy, <coughs> it's easy to check. And this this is the same as the as this um, Jordan Hölder um, multiplicity because the duality is exact and L C lambda U is L C lambda. So it's just the same multiplicity. It would be more non more natural to write down this. We can deform QC lambda and set C mu. They um, they um, admit uh, flat deformations, so we can kind of uh, move this lambda by infinitesimal translations, and then study the corresponding module. I will do that in the um, after the tea break. Um, we cannot deform the symbols; they are rigid. They don't admit a, a deformation. 
but the projectives and the um, baby bonbon models, they have little deformation. Okay, that is the, what we do now after tea. So you, you will consider them over some of a series we need one right? Um, even even over a symmetric algebra, so uh, uh, we'll actually de um, consider them as families over over the D algebra of um, so so as families over over H dual. So um, you see, lambda is so so x uh, um, x minus two x modulo p x. And this sits inside the weights of the Lie algebra. And there's a way, which is kind of technical, to um, to associate the baby Bama module over each element of H2, and then you can consider uh, them as a continuous uh, flat families over H H2. And then you can look what happens when you kind of disturb the weight lambda by an infinitesimal um, transformation translation. And then it turns out we can describe everything when we just vary lambda a little, and then we have to put all this information together to get information about this part of the city. But I will explain in more detail what that amounts to. Okay, so um, we've seen that um, the calculation of the, um, the, the irreducible characters um, is equivalent to this this problem now, and um, okay. In the, so this should be done for all lambda and mu in um, in X, but there's also a periodicity going on. Um, as, so. Um, you get, for example, um, QC lambda plus P mu um, by taking QC lambda and then shifting the grading by P mu. So these are very, uh, so in fact, you only have to calculate finitely many of those. Um, so Lustig's, Lustig's formula now is equivalent to the following. So recall the Lustig's formula um, was a difficult uh, um, sum. <coughs> um, alternating sum of characters of uh, vial modules, and Lustig's formula would be equivalent um, to the following. Um, so, if lambda is anti-dominant for um, a finite vial group. So that would mean that w dot lambda is um, bigger or um, equal to lambda for, um, say, anti-dominant and regular. So w dot lambda is um, strictly bigger than lambda for all w in w, which are not the identity, um, then um, QC lambda Z Z mu should be given um, as follows. So this is zero if um, mu is not in the orbit of the affine value group of lambda, and it should be given by a certain, um, uh, sorry, um, 
x ist in, in, die Feinheit, in der Feinheit äh, Wahlgruppe. X dot lambda, so we want, of course, for all the multiplicities, it should be given by um, w x if, um, if mu is w dot lambda, here w is an element in, in the affine uh, value, and this evaluated one, and this is, a, is a, what is called a periodic mystic polynomial. That's another uh, polynomial that, um, that is defined in terms of the combinatorics of the affine value. Um, so, right, I will, next week I will talk about Kastanusi polynomials um, and I will uh, motivate I will motivate this, these kind of conjectures. Um, I will motivate why um, Kashanusi polynomials appear here. But at the moment, um, I don't have the methods. And it's, um, it's advantageous to introduce these polynomials once um, we have all the methods um, uh, to, to our disposal. Um, and that Lucid's, Lucid's formula is equivalent to this is a kind of a difficult um, calculation with affine polynomials, periodic polynomials, you have to know the interrelations between those and the um, connection between the character of the uh, William Verma module and the Val module, and, but in the end, it's a formal computation with uh, characters. Okay, so uh, now what about um, deformation? Um, as I have announced, I would like to switch now to characteristic zero theory um, because it uh, contains already all the ideas that we need for the modular case, but it's much simpler to, um, to write down. So from this point on, um, many things that are easy to construct in, in characteristic zero are very hard to construct or don't even exist in, in, in the modular case. So one has to find a way around these, these technical problems. And as I, I might have mentioned that this is the, one of the reasons why um, the Anderson Janssen survey paper is not 20 pages, but 200 um, pages long. Okay, so um, possibility. Switch to characteristic zero. So you can think of um, um, think of a character zero as a limit where p goes to infinity. Then the uh, baby Verma module um, kind of transforms into a Verma module. Um, so in this case, you have um, no, so um, G is a semi-simple complex C algebra. And um, so um, it, of course, has a, um, a, a Catan and Borel subalgebra. And uh, for each lambda in the dual space, we have, uh, now let me call it delta lambda, that's a kind of the usual notation in the complex semi-sample case, that is the Verma module. And L lambda, as before, is, is its unique reducible quotient. And our category C um, is translated into category O. So category O for us um, is, is the following. It's the category of all um, G modules where H acts semi-simply. You don't need um, that M is finally generated uh, or 
so that is not really necessary for our purpose. Sometimes it's it's it added, but we can we can leave that out. Um, and in the Katsumini case, one should not um, add in time engineering because in a in a critical level, it wouldn't be in a Boolean category anymore. So um, then here. Um, so the rates could go up to infinity in the positive direction. They could, yeah, but um, only uh, not locally. Not locally. Um, but an infinite sum, um, infinite certain infinite sums would, should still be an H rate module. So um, certain infinite sums may, um, might, might lie in, in the cameo. So um, okay. Um, so um, then there exists um, um, a P lambda and an L lambda. This is a projective cover. In, in O, in O, and um, you have bits of Wormerfleck. Wormerfleck, everything is as, as before, and the Kashtan mystic conjecture is equivalent to the following. So. Um, Um, of 
So, sorry. To write modules of the endomorphism ring of P lambda. Right, by composition, if you have a homomorphism from P lambda to something, by composition, with an endomorphism, you get another homomorphism. So every module gets transferred in this endomorphism ring. And, um, and it turns out, so that's a theorem of the Um that the endomorphism ring of P lambda is a, a space of co-invariance of the Weyl group. So this is um, this is the symmetric algebra over over the Catan. What you know the um, the um, invariance. In, in positive, um, in positive degree. So the um, so this is a the symmetric algebra of the Cartan is um, is a graded, is a graded space where you know this um, vector space sits in degree two. Actually, we should put it in degree two for homological for geometric reasons. And then you take the the positive, uh, the subspace in positive um, um, degree, and you take W invariance. And then you divide it out, and then what you get is an is an algebra, it is 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 commutative algebra. In, in fact, so this is commutative, and this is the endomorphism ring. So you can um, transform this into um, yeah into um, a, a statement on this uh, commutative algebra. And you see, this now gets the, the theory kind of tends to get simpler now. On the right, we have an, a commutative algebra, actually quotient of a symmetric algebra. And on the left, we have this kind of difficult can we O. And then the point is that uh, Lee is fully faithful on projectors. Um, but now, how can we um, how can we um, translate this um, this conjecture into a conjecture on these um, co-invariants? Um, um, sorry, where is Lando on the right side? Um, that's not there anymore. It's independent of Lambda. So um, as soon as Lambda is regular and anti-dominant, it doesn't depend on Lambda. But let me. Uh, let me, so, hmm. um, okay, let me, let me, with this information, let me, uh, let me finish Zerto's original argument, which is kind of a, very mysterious if you don't, I mean, I would explain this in, in much more detail. It will become much clearer once we deform the whole situation. But um, the theorem of observable is, um, is um, um, the following. So, so first, I mean, the, uh, the first, first is, um, um, uh, so it's, it's due to, I mean, this, this um, space of invariance This coincides with the cohomology of G not B. So this is the the Borel, um, the Borel homomorphism. So I mean, in uh, this is the cohomology space of G not B, and in fact, it, it is more more natural to uh, to look at the um, Langmans dual. Uh, flag manifold. So this is Langmans dual flag manifold. Um, so you take the uh, group of the Langmans dual um, root data. So the Borel homomorphism um, as 
associates to each linear form on, um, on, on the Borel. And you see, I mean, we have to take the, the Langlands dual Borel in order that H is the <coughs> algebra of um, um, in, in linear forms or the D algebra of T dual, of the dual torus. So this should be a linear, this is a linear form. An element in H is a linear form on the D algebra of, uh, of the torus. This is why we have to revert and um, replace root by codes. Um, so each linear form gives an integral linear form, gives a, gives a line bundle there, and you take the germ class of this line bundle, and you get a cohomology. But it's kind of um, the, the Borel image. And uh, what, um, what, Zergel, uh, what Zergel proved is that um, is V of P um, w dot lambda. So this is a this is a mo um, module of the anamorphism ring of, um, uh, of of p lambda. So an anamorphism ring the, over over this space. So module of the cohomology of the Langlands dual flag variety. And what um, um proof is that this is the intersection um, cohomology of uh, b check W B check of this Schubert variety. And this is the intersection cohomology. And this holds S as modules over homology of this variety. The intersection homology is always a module over the homology of the variety. Um, this is what Zerbe proved. Um, and now, this yields a connection between projective objects in O and intersection homology on the flag variety. And um, so the decomposition theorem so this is um, um, yeah, the decomposition theorem in um, in algebra geometry so is a statement about uh, semi simplicity and um, um, perversity of certain um, push forwards of um, of um, intersection homology complexes. This yields a statement that um, well, it yields ca the casuistic conjecture. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. At the moment, at the moment, I cannot be more precise than this. Um, we will now deform the whole situation, and, um, and there I can. Be. So is it? Oh, it is five, right? So I'm I'm, I'm done with my my time. So right? Is it under five? I can maybe maybe um. Okay, yeah, I can I can go on a little bit maybe without too many details, and not, I mean, should maybe start fresh on, on next Tuesday. But um, what I um, what I want to do next is the following. So this so is there's been so already no D modules in this. Uh, no D modules. No, uh, this um, this is a, a proof that is independent of D modules, and this is also why why it's kind of more directly uh, um, applicable. In, in the modular case, because you know D module theory in characteristic P is highly um, highly technical and very difficult. It's what uh, Roman Beslukovnikov and co-authors studied, but this is um, kind of more easily adaptable to um, positive characteristics. Um, so what I want to do next is um, I want to add um, a deformation. Parameter. So instead of looking and um, developing this theory over just over the complex numbers, we look at uh, this in, in families. So um, S um, S is 
the symmetric algebra of H. Yeah, we use that uh, before. And we look at relative, situa uh, relative situations. We put an S everywhere. So um, these objects acquire an additional um, action of, uh, of the symmetric algebra. And um, what, you, what you obtain here then is um, I mean, this object is acted upon by, by the symmetric algebra in two ways. In one way, so on the one side, it's a deformation parameter. On the other um, side, it's acted upon by this, uh, by this algebra. So this is an S by module. And this, um, this action, the image here, goes to the category which is called observable by module. And inside this um, category of server by modules, um, you can you can very easily motivate all these multiplicity and um, decomposition conjectures. Um, this will be the topic next uh, week, and we get uh, server by modules. And in a modular case, you should replace this category by the category of uh, modules over uh, sheaves on a moment graph, because the server by modules they there are some some problems. When you look at the affine situation and reduce modulo p, then it's not not really clear what, what these what these are. But in the finite dimensional case, you can um, you find you construct this functor from the form version to the by modules and study the problem here. And this is um, in this category, um, Ben Elias and Jordi Williamson proved. Um, the, um, the corresponding statement without using any geometry. And also in this category, Johnny Williamson proved that, um, that there is a count example in terms of just a P. But this will be the topic of next week. Okay, thank you. Thank you.